So Great. Um, the first one I'll show actually is one of the applications that we will release as uh, source code available. So it's just a simple spirit level, right, to, to keep your table or your picture frame um, level. Okay. Um, and basically it's got two modes. So it's got a uh, surface mode. So as you can see, it's sitting here on the table and it's um, pretty... It's good to see our Channel 9 studio is pretty, perfectly flat. Pretty much level, maybe <laughs> off a little bit. Oh, okay. But as we, uh, as we tilt this, you'll see that the little bubble will go to the side and um, you'll be able to, to check if, you're, um, if your surface is level. And actually if you turn it into this mode, then it actually changes into... Perfect um, for hanging picture frames. Exactly. So again, just a, a simple application, but if you... So the next one I want to jump into is another fairly simple application. Um, this one's a unit converter. Um, so if you want to figure out uh, how many, uh, in this case, is inches in a foot, or if you're doing, again, Maybe you're taking the level application to help uh, build your tool shed, uh -huh. and you need to do some <laughs> conversions from inches to meters or, or kilograms to, to pounds. Um, you can do that here. Um, one thing to highlight here is if we go into the conversions um, page where you can actually change the conversions that you're using, um, this is where we're using the uh, pivot control. Um, mm -hmm. It's a quite common paradigm on the phone. Mm -hmm. um, and there will actually be a pivot control uh, included in the tools at release. It's not out there in the current build. Mm -hmm. um, but when we release the tools, there will be a pivot control that developers can just drop into their applications um, and create these nice dynamic um, user experiences with So with you do time, volume, angle, weight? Yeah, I think we've got eight or nine different categories Speed, here. Speed, that's great. Yeah, so you can just switch between those, maybe there. Um, you can add that as a favorite. We basically keep that saved um, over here as one of the pivots. So you can just save the, the, the conversions that you're doing quite often. Yeah, so, great. Yeah. So uh, with the translator application, actually we're taking advantage of the Microsoft Translation Service, mm -hmm. um, which is um, something out of MSR. Yep, um, I saw it this year at TechFest. Um, which they've got a public API, so you can actually go out and build your own um, interesting translation application today. So we took advantage of that. Um, and let me just... Uh, so you said, I don't know if you can see it at home, but it's going from English to German. Yep, so let me just uh, type in a phrase that somebody might want to translate here, like I love Channel 9. And translate. And it's Ich liebe Kanal 9. Um, so now, you might not have the greatest pronunciation in the... You sounded good. I, I've done a little I bit... I was impressed. I've done a little bit of German. Okay. Um, but uh, if, if you don't have the, the best translation in the language that you're translating to, actually, we have a little speaker button here. Uh, I don't know if people could oh, hear that. Here, hold it up to your mic. Try that again. So that's actually getting a... That's great. A sound file downloaded from the Microsoft Translation Service, um, and it's actually localized into the accent of somebody that, that is a native speaker. Wow, of so that I'm assuming language. you've got Spanish, French, yep, exactly. German, so if we tap on, what other languages? So if you tap on the, the language here, um, we've got English, French, Italian, German, and Spanish. Um, and we chose those, language init those languages initially because those are the languages that the phone is going to be available in at launch. Great. Um, and so we can expand that out later, but those are the core languages. Now, do you know offhand how, how many uh, text characters can you input? Like, is there 140 maximum, like, like Twitter? Or can I type in an entire novel? It's basically whatever you can fit into the, the, into little, the, screen. Into the little screen here. Yeah. That's great. So it's, it's meant to be translating very short phrases. Sure. Um, and we actually have a bunch of built-in phrases here um, in the app. Whoops. Where was this when I was backpacking through Europe I in know. my little books I going, know. Uh, you know, Uwe la Louvre. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the challenges that people have with translation uh, apps today is generally there's, there's two categories of them. One is fully service connected, so you can't do anything with it when it's off, offline. Right. Or the ones that actually download basically the entire English-French dictionary to your phone, and those mm -hmm. ones tend to be very expensive because it's, you know, the, Huge. the Collins, you know, dictionary company yeah. selling it to you. So we've kind of taken a hybrid approach with this application where basically you need to be connected to do a new translation, but once you do that, we'll save it locally in isolated storage, the, both the string translation and the audio file. So Great. that way you, um, if you have the... So you have all your commonly asked questions. Exactly. You know, where's the bathroom? Exactly. I see and you've got, I would like some beer to drink. Yep, so the, 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 thing, the things you're going to need when, when you're traveling around, right. uh, maybe for Oktoberfest in, in Germany, um, you have those stored locally on the phone. So even if you're in airplane mode, you're not, you don't want to roam 
you've actually got that locally available to, to be able to play around with. So. Now, does it also come with uh, just some basic questions pre-installed, or is yes. it just, it does? So it's yep. the ones that you create and the sort of exactly. FAQ. Exactly. So we come with, I think, 50 different phrases, kind of common things and numbers and things you'll mm -hmm. need um, when, you're, when you're traveling around. But then if you add your own, those will get saved as well. Fair enough. Um, the next one we have is a little shopping, shopping list application. Um, so this uh, allows you to just kind of keep track of uh, your needs when you're out shopping. So you um, get pre-populated with a simple grocery list and you can just add in, um, let's see, carrots. You'll see that um, the auto correction on the phone actually mm -hmm. shows up and that's available to third party applications. So mm -hmm. let's go you know, buy one carrot um, and maybe some eggs and add that. And just makes it really easy to be able to add um, multiple items to your list. Um, and then those show up in a list form and you can change the quantity associated with them. You can actually dive into a specific um, item and just put in some description and category and that'll help mm -hmm. you uh, sort your items and also um, add an item as a favorite and you'll see that shows up as a little star next to it. Um, and what that does is um, to help you handle the, the case where you've got maybe a set of items that you buy every week when you go shopping, you can set those as favorites. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you go to use this little checkout button here, um, you can say, shop just favorites. And basically what that'll do is repopulate your list mm -hmm. with the set of things that you buy every week so that the next time you go to the store, they're all there for you. So I'd set. Next one I'm going to show is weather. So uh, stocks and weather are a couple of applications that people always want to have on their phones. So we yeah. whipped up um, some simple versions. Um, so uh, there's no uh, cities added yet, but I can go in and add a city. You'll see that it actually finds my current location. So okay, make it so really using GPS? Yep, just using the GPS and the location What if I framework. wanted to see what the weather's like in New York? All right, well then let's add New York. So you can either get quickly get your current location or you can um, search for a new location and that'll go out and get a set of cities, and we just had New York. There we go. It's 88 degrees. Woo! It's and warm in Manhattan. Tap in there. We can get uh, the details, um, so temperature as well as you know some additional mm -hmm. weather geek kind of information. Um, and again, this is using... And if I'm not going there to the weekend, you show the forecast. Exactly. So you get Good. a 10-day forecast. So take a quick look at stocks. So with stocks, we actually uh, pre-populate you with um, three stocks, uh, Microsoft, since you know everybody wants to know how we're Everyone doing. Everyone does. How are um, we doing? We are up today, uh, 2603. So Beautiful. Not, not too bad. Um, and then the Dow and the NASDAQ, a couple in, uh, indices that people want to check. Um, so let's just dive into Microsoft here. Um, and again, similar to the weather application, basically you have sort of an overview page and then you dive into uh, the specific details. Um, so here we see the um, price and it's up, which is good. Um, again, pivot control, we can switch over and see a chart. Again, taking advantage of the accent color on the phone mm -hmm. um, to use red here. Um, and we can switch between. Oh, and that's just showing hourly throughout today. Yep, cool. exactly. So you can switch between A different weekly. time. Time. The other thing I want to show on this one is uh, you'll get the news um, associated with that stock. Um, this is coming from Bing, um, and if we tap on a news item. It'll actually take us out to, uh, Internet, to the web page. Internet Explorer in the browser. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so that's using um, the browser launcher functionality in the application platform. So basically, any application that wants to send you out to a particular website mm -hmm. can just easily, within a couple of lines of code, just you know, open up the the browser and, nice. and point it to a particular URL. So there you are. Uh, yeah, we'll Definitely. So this one is actually a, a game built in Silverlight. And part of what we wanted to do was show that you can actually build an interesting two-dimensional game in Silverlight. And this is finished, you said, or this no, is sort this of a is, work in progress? No, this, this is a work in progress. Okay. Yes, and you'll, Keep that in mind, people. Yeah, you'll see that um, the the UI that we've got is is still kind of placeholder, but, you know, it's it's all right. Um, but this actually, again, uses the accelerometer. Um, and the, I should say, oh, the, that game would drive me crazy. The, the objective of the <laughs> game is actually to get uh, these little metal balls that you can see here to actually come together. So the to touch. The, yeah, the faster you can get them, get them to come together, the better. Um, oh, and, and then, then it gets bigger. And then you'll see it gets bigger, and then other balls will show up. Whoop. And then we've got some kind of cheesy sound effects there for now. Hey, hey, don't knock <laughs> it. Um, and then you'll have, you know, as you go through the levels, you get additional obstacles. Um, that you have to get around. And there you You're go. good. Yeah. Play it a couple times. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see, ad yeah, additional balls will show up, and so there's, you know, more things as you get later in levels. There's additional doors and 
Chief. We got, oh, we wow. got blocks that show up. Um, That's fun. 